Hello everybody and this is Chaos with Chaos Esports Productions bringing you a tutorial on open broadcasting software. So I just wanted to let you guys know about this awesome program that I use to stream. Um, basically as I mentioned in one of my previous videos I'm going to be doing tutorials on how to set up your own stream, record your own games, do all that stuff because getting content out on YouTube is always a lot of fun. Uh, I know I've been enjoying making videos with my StarCraft 2 and everything else. So, anyways, so we're going to be looking at um, OBS. Basically, I'm just going to go over a rough overview of how it works, what you need to think about when you're looking at streaming, and things like that. So, nothing, nothing too complicated today. Um, if you guys, any of you guys have any questions about some of the things that I talk about or need some clarification, feel free to shoot me a tweet. I'll leave my Twitter account in the description. I, I've decided that commenting to YouTube, obviously when I reply to your YouTube account, you'll get a little notification saying that, hey, I commented. But uh, I've, I find Twitter a lot quicker as far as, you know, people generally check Twitter more often than they check YouTube. So, just a thought. So, we're going to go ahead and get into the settings now. I'm going to first start and look at my FPS. My FPS is actually at what I said it would be, but for some odd reason I'm only shooting at 20 frames per second. So, obviously, I'm not sure what the reason is there. So, anyways, so we're going to just go through the settings. So general is fairly simple, just your language and then uh, settings profile, no big deal. You can add, you know, change the name, add different settings for uh, different streams. So for instance, let's say you had uh, multiple TV, you know, TV show-esque things that you do a week. You can set up profiles for each one of those and basically it allows you to switch between them fairly quickly. So anyways, uh, encoding, generally speaking, depending on what kind of computer you're running as far as specs and things like that, kind of is what it limits you as far as this go now. There are lots of tutorials out there as far as picking the a adequate enough bit rate and uh, buffer size. This is just kind of what I use now. I stream, I have a 2 0.0 megabit per second upload rate so I and my computer is actually a fairly decent computer I've got an i7 with a uh, I think it's an ATI graphics card so one of the one of the newer models as well so I tend to go with quality 10 but obviously if you during your test runs of your stream you might want to try playing with the setting and seeing how the quality looks um, I, I've played around and I, I generally don't go below 8 just because once you get into 8 your letters and stuff start to get pixelated and personally I just I don't really find it amusing to watch so anyways so broadcasting settings now I don't know if I can actually show you okay I can so basically what you're going to do is you're going to set up an account with either twitch.tv or any of these other account providers and basically what this is is this allows you to go in and physically stream on t through that website so basically you have to set up an account with them and then you have to find the stream path now I'm going to go ahead and open up a new window here and kind of give you an idea of how to find that if you go for me I use twitch.tv and if I go to my dashboard um, and go to streaming apps. Up in the upper right hand corner here, it says show. Key. If Usain Bolt represents Xfinity uh, Internet, I what happens when we double the speed on two of our that. Okay, anyways. Um, you'll have the show key button. When you click on that, it will show give you a, a code that you can then input into. Wow, League of Legends. Not what I was looking for. Uh, that's what I was looking for. That code you can basically just copy and paste and paste into here and everything is good to go. Um, the auto reconnect basically says that if you drop at any given point it will 
try and reconnect instantly. So basically, obviously, you don't want your stream to get down or be down for a significant amount of time if you're like in the middle of your stream. And this basically allows you to continue streaming even if it does fail because it'll reboot and basically save your stream. Uh, you can also stream on a delay. Now, a lot of people do this for stream cheaters who go and look at Twitch people who are streaming and, you know, try to cheat and watch what you're doing while you're playing them. So basically giving them vision of both sides of the map in case in the StarCraft case or whatever. Um, let's see, the dashboard link. Basically, this is just, this is a generic dashboard link. When you're logged in, that is what, it's whatever, it's just dashboard dot or broadcast dot slash dashboard uh, at twitch.tv. Now, I'm not sure if other providers use a different link, but I'm sure it's something similar. Uh, you can save to file. Basically what this does is if you want to save your streams directly after you finish broadcasting, uh, you can click on this button and then choose your path. Now, one thing I want to word a caution, if you do choose to do this, basically when you finish your broadcast, it will take a, like, let's say you're streaming for four hours and you have the save to file clicked. It will take all of that data from that stream and depending on what kind of quality and resolution you're streaming at, that could be a very, very big file. It will take all of that data and save it to a single file. Now the problem with this is I know my computer, when I did it the first time, it took like two hours to, you know, finish. So obviously you don't want to be, you know, buffering down your computer too terribly much. So I don't personally recommend uh, recording straight from a from a, a, a stream. Just my personal preference, but you guys can play around with that and see what you think. And then, obviously, there is a start stream and stop stream hotkey that you can set up. I just have mine as the default uh, numpad plus and minus, so pretty simple. Next, we're going to get... Oh, no, cancel. Cancel. Uh, reopen the settings, and we'll go to video. Now, here's where you set up, basically, your, your screen resolution. 720p is 1280 by 720. Um... If you want 1080, I believe it's 1960 by uh, 1080. You can kind of play around with whatever you want to stream. Personally, 720p is good enough in my opinion. When you get into 1080p, obviously you're uploading more data, so it's more, you know, processor heavy, and you know it can slow down your stream. It can buffer you in game, make you lag, and things like that. So. Definitely a word of caution as to, to choosing to go that route. Um, that's pretty much it for that. Speakers and microphone, fairly straightforward. Anything that's plugged into your computer that is a audio input or output, you can set as those. Uh, you can also set up a push to talk. So basically, if you set this, you can set a hotkey, and you have to be holding down that hotkey in order for uh, OBS to actually have your voice be streamed with the video. Um, you can create hotkeys for muting your mic mute, uh, or uh, muting your desktop. Uh, everything everything else is pretty standard. I don't really play around with this or haven't played around with this too much yet because uh, basically I'm just running off of a, of a headset, you know, gaming headset. No big deal. Um, and then you get into the advanced settings. Now this is where depending on what kind of processor you have and graphics card, you can tweak around with these. Honestly, I think, uh, personally, I think the uh, the standard settings are actually halfway decent. I, I have the CPU process up to very fast as opposed to uh, faster or slow, just kind of my preference. Um, but other than that, I mean, you can kind of play around with these. If you've got any questions about some of these things and what they do, I might make another video about and go through each one of these and explain what they do but overall if you're just looking to do a basic stream this is a very simple way to do it so I think that's it for the settings we're gonna go quickly into uh, just kind of the layout and how it works now this program is very is set up a lot like uh, this program here this XSplit and basically it's set up you've got your 
basically this is what's being broadcast you can minimize this or you know make it smaller so it doesn't take up as much uh, video processing power to generate that but basically you have scenes and you have sources your sources are your monitor your game uh, a webcam an image things of that so basically the way I have it set it up is I've got all of the potential sources that I could have. So I've got my desktop, my SE2, my League of Legends. Now, when you set up your global sources, I'll get into that to a sec, you have to set them up individually or else you can't physically, uh, like you can't set up an SE2, uh, what am I thinking of? An SE2 instance and it show League of Legends. It just doesn't work like that. So. I'll get into that here in a sec. And then obviously you can set up other images. As you can see, this is uh, you know, my typical out of out of games screen. Um, and you can basically switch back and forth between them. Uh, you can also set up by right clicking, you can set hotkeys for these. So for me, I've got like my numkey one set as my first scene, numkey two for second, so on and so forth. So that's pretty much how you set things up. And then obviously, I guess it might not be obvious, but the sources, depending on where they lie physically, is dependent upon what is on top. Now, think of think of the screen as a whole bunch of layers on top of each other. So, if you want to put a your your webcam in the lower right hand corner of your screen, you have to make sure that your webcam is on top. Uh, I'll give a quick example. I will add uh, software capture. Uh, actually, I don't think it's software capture. I think it's actually there's a video capture device. And if I hit OK, my guess is it'll probably bring up my camera, which is OK. You will get to see me for the very first time. <gasps> it's me. Anyway, so you can size this. Uh, we want to, I don't know if you can edit this and, okay, well, I'm not going to, not going to futz around with it right now, but basically when you're out just doing a preview stream, you can resize and make it where you want it. So basically, as you can see, the video capture device was on top, so it overlays the desktop. So that's just generally speaking how that works. Um, over here we've got all of the buttons that you need. Now this settings button actually takes you to the settings menu from down here. Same thing. Uh, editing your source, uh, edi editing your scene. Actually, I think that's how you do it. Yeah. So now we've now we can like pull different things. Like see now I'm uh, I can shrink this by editing the scene and move it around and whatnot. So that's how you do that. Simple enough. Um, and then let's see, global sources. So now this allows you to set up global sources, which means you can call them, like you can already have something preset and call it. So if you make a new scene, you can just go to your global sources and it's already set up. You just throw it in there, edit it, have a nice day. Very simple, straightforward. Um, plugins, I haven't played around with any of the plugins. So if you've got any questions, I don't know, even know. See direct game capture plugin and direct show. So I'm guessing these are probably for various. Now the game capture plugin. What this allows me to do is this allows me to do this SC2 and this League of Legends capture. What it does is when you set up a global source for a game capture, it will have you oh my game. It will have you actually physically go and pick what game you're playing, whatever's up and then it will set that as your source. So, fairly straightforward. Anyways, if you guys got any questions, feel free to uh, shoot me a tweet. Uh, I'll be happy to answer your questions. Also, if you guys want to see me stream, you can follow me at twitch.tv slash chaos with a C2 at the end, because uh, chaos was already taken and, you know, it happens like that. So check me out there. Also, follow me on Twitter. Um, I'll be answering your all's questions. If you have there. a business. Uh, you have a turn story. That off. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, let me know what you guys think about these tutorials. Uh, I'm planning on doing one on DX Tory, 
because that's the application that I use for recording my SE2 replays and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Feel free to leave any comments in the section below. If you liked it, go ahead and like it. If you're new to this channel and want to get involved, feel free to subscribe and you will get all my updates with on your YouTube feed and things will be rocking. So I hope you guys enjoy.